So one of the big things is that the diversity in the roots differ by plant host. So the plants were different. Here we have on the x-axis at the different time points, y-axis is the richness of, of the different plants. And for bacteria and fungi, we can see how overall, yes, they start different at the very beginning, but towards the end, they are look fairly similar or they have like similar value, similar richness. But on the contrary, we can see on the roots for both bacteria and fungi, across all time points, Kentucky had higher richness compared to switchgrass. Also, we wanted to see how the community structures of these plants, like if they were like, yes, we are looking at some differences in richness, but how that would relate to the community structure. Like, do they have a similar community structure? And so far, like, turns out that they don't. So they have different communities, red being Kentucky, green being switchgrass. We can see here in the rhizosphere how they are grouping together in this PCR plot. So in this graph, you are gonna you are looking at how the closer they are grouped, the more similar they are, the farther apart, the opposite they are. And we can also see in the same uh, way how in the roots in the bacteria community, they are different. We have red here, green here. And for fungi, it's same in the rhizosphere. For bacteria, we have two different distinct groups based on the plants. Here, even though it was uh, to the permanoa significant, and we can see red and green separated, they're still more spread out. Um, I'm still trying to wrap my head about this part that it may be due to the fact that the microbes that are getting recruited to their roots might be more similar, even though it tends to be more post-oriented, still is more similar because you have fewer microbes coming in and getting recruited by the plants. On the other hand, so we are looking, let's take a, a moment. So we have different richness, different community structure. So how would that relate if we want to see, see it in a composition of that community? Here, for this uh, purpose of this talk, I'm just gonna be focusing on the rhizosphere. The trends are similar in both rhizosphere and root. And here we can see in this, the x-axis are all the samples ordered by the time points. Y-axis is relative abundance from zero to 100%. And I'm just showing you guys the top 10 um, families. And you see a lot of colors, but I just want to highlight a particular one for an example. That is the family Santo Monada CI. Uh, we can see here how in Kentucky bluegrass is higher than switchgrass. So we saw this and we were like, okay, is there a, another way we can test these differences? And we did a, what is called a differential abundance analysis. So we were looking in to see, have another statistical test to see the differences. And y-axis is the log twofold change, so how different they are. And the y-axis here is the p-value, so how significant it is. And here, we can, anything that is in the positive values in the log twofold change, it is favored towards switchgrass, and everything that is on the negative values are favored towards Kentucky bluegrass. And here we can see again, Santo Mona CI that is being favored by Kentucky bluegrass that we can relate to the composition that is higher than switchgrass. And in addition, we want like, Yes, we are seeing these differences, but we wanted to narrow it down a little bit more to show it across time and have a couple of other examples as well. So here we can, we have Ketonodiobacteria CI that it was higher across time through in switchgrass. Immunobacteria CI was higher 
in Kentucky bluegrass throughout, even though it fluctuated their abundance, you can see like it's still higher than than switchgrass. And we have Santorum SAI, the micro, the family that I was like using as an example to show you guys all of these differences that it was throughout all the time points, it was higher in Kentucky bluegrass than switchgrass. So as we saw in the bacterial community, we also saw similar patterns in the fungal community. So again, y-axis is the samples ordered in time. The y-axis is relative abundance. And here I went to get you guys to look at the light green um, order in the case of the fungi that you can see how in Kentucky, there's no a whole lot, but in street grass, there is more. Again, we did a differential abundance analysis where we can see hypocreales being favored towards switchgrass. So we can see how here we definitely have more of them. And through this other statistical analysis, we can see it again being uh, favored towards uh, switchgrass. And again, we did present them across different times. And here we can see x-axis is the different time points for the abundance of the different uh, fungal orders. And we can see how Urotale mucoralis seems to be higher in Kentucky bluegrass. But then as uh, was shown previous, that it was favored, we have hypocreales to be higher in switchgrass throughout time as well. So we are looking at to see all of these differences starting from the richness across the different plants, the community structure of these plants, how the composition of these uh, communities is affected by the different plant hosts. So we wanted to tie in everything and look at to the root exudates. And so we did, this is a PCA plot looking at all the metabolites that were identified. And to my surprise, because it's the first time I'm working with this type of data, I have found that, uh, of course, switchgrass and Kentucky bluegrass have a different metabolic uh, profile. And just to, for an example, here I'm just showing a couple of different um, metabolite classes. And we can see how they here in this first one, how they have the three different time points from second, third, and fifth. How here we can see an increase towards the end in switchgrass, aliphatic compounds, we have a different way, different um, ab relative abundance of these compounds, similar in cyclonucleotides and actinamines, actina mines, we can see also they are different. So this is just an example. I will have to go in and see a like specific metabolite because here I'm just grouping them in their different classes. But I, this is just to highlight that in their metabolic uh, through x weight profile, they are different. And we can reflect to how different they are in the community, structure, richness, and compositional. So a big conclusion is Kentucky, bluegrass, and switchgrass, they are different in both communities and exudates. And a couple of the implications of this work to all the labor that you guys are doing in researching pool grasses is how uh, these differences can be inferred, how Kentucky blue, uh, Kentucky bluegrass in a dominating in a grassland, it definitely will impact below ground dynamics. In addition, we have to think about how all the aspects of the microbial community with the sum of the all the physiological strategies that Kentucky bluegrass have can dominate or keep dominating native ecosystem. And finally, uh, one thing is that in another project that goes through different 
uh, management practices, we are already seeing with the reduction of Kentucky bluegrass, we have an increase in microbial diversity. So this is actually really cool that we have all of these differences. It is dominating, but when we have management practices in play, we start seeing differences in the microbial community. And finally, um, and to thank everyone, uh, Dr. Banerjee, Dr. Kevin Sedivek, Chandi Kaiser, and everyone for having me today, giving you guys this talk. And thank you. <laughs>